The late great Harlan Ellison's A Boy and His Dog cycle of stories has recently received a fresh publishing treatment that brings the collected tales of Vic and Blood to an updated completion. Although these stories were collectively published as Bloods Are Over, The Complete Adventures of a Boy and His Dog by Subterranean Press in 2018, Jason Davis, the editor, has worked to update these stories for a revised publication by Edgeworks Abbey Archive in 2021. Vic and Blood, the protagonists of A Boy and His Dog, have had a long and controversial history in science fiction. If you are a younger reader or new to science fiction, you may not have heard of them. And if you're an older science fiction fan, then perhaps the last time you visited this rather odd duo, it may have seemed that their doom was inevitable. Appearing in the mediums of book, comic and film, these characters are what Harlan Ellison considered the one work of his that came close to a universal hit. With an updated timeline to better reflect today's society in the new edition of the completed stories, I think it's therefore time to revisit these wonderful, controversial, much maligned and often misunderstood characters. Vic and Blood first appeared in Harlan Ellison's short story A Boy and His Dog, published in the July 1969 edition of New Worlds magazine. The story was revised and expanded to novella length, and published in Ellison's 1969 short story collection, The Beast That Shouted Love at the Heart of the World. A Boy and His Dog would go on to win the Nebula Award for Best Novella that same year. The story follows the adventures of a 15-year-old boy called Vic and his dog Blood, as they survive in a post-apocalyptic America. Society has collapsed following the destruction of World Wars 3 and 4. The few that survive above ground, mostly male, form into gangs known as rover packs. Individuals who do not survive by staying in a gang and who scavenge the wasteland alone are known as solos, and Vic is one such solo. Vic's companion, Blood, is a telepathic skirmisher dog, the result of a selective breeding and genetic engineering program involving cetaceans and canines. Telepathic over short distances, easily trained, able to track gasoline or troops or poison gas or radiation when linked with their human controllers, they had become the shock commandos of a new kind of war. Vic was born after World War IV, and Blood survived the aftermath of the World Wars, and therein lies the crux of their symbiotic relationship. Because of the continued development of dogs' telepathic traits, canines have lost the ability to find food for themselves. Needing Vic to find food, Blood is in return able to check if it is safe, if there is any radiation nearby, and can also detect various dangers that the two encounter. The real charm of Harlan Ellison's darkly humorous story lies in the relationship between Vic and Blood. Their relationship and their goals in life are similar to that of George and Lenny from John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. They are of a different species to each other, and more importantly, they are separated by generations of time, Blood being elderly and Vic very young. The two work together to survive, and although they can get on each other's nerves, their relationship is one of mutual respect and love. Blood acts as a rather misanthropic if good-natured mentor to Vic, and tries to educate the boy in survival and history. Blood is a friend, father, protector and teacher to Vic, while Vic is a friend, pupil, protector and son to Blood. Blood calls Vic Albert mockingly, in reference to Albert Payson Terhune, the famous American dog breeder and author, while Vic, when annoyed, calls Blood Egg Sucker, Egg Sucker also being the title of the first story in the narrative cycle. Vic was seen to be quite brutish by Ellison, with Blood being the civilised one of the two. Before we take a look at this cycle of stories, I'm going to provide a brief synopsis of the novella itself, but I will only give brief details on the other stories so as not to spoil them for you. So, some spoilers ahead. Grub first, then ethics. A boy and his dog is narrated in the first person by Vic. Having made certain that blood has been well fed, Vic wants the dog to find him a piece of ass. Unable to do so, blood suggests they go to the local cinema, which is run by their gang, which is known as our gang. Different gangs control different territories, and the gang that Vic and Blood attach themselves to run a surviving cinema, 
where solos come to watch pre-war movies. Blood detects a healthy woman in the cinema, disguised as a solo. Women surviving above ground in this post-apocalyptic world are rare, and we learn that most have gone down below, into underground societies that had survived the war. Some women have formed rover packs, and occasionally some operate on their own as solos such as Spike from Bloods Are Over. Occasionally young women from these underground towns sneak above ground to watch the films, and the young woman in question seems to have done so. The young woman leaves the rover pack cinema unnoticed by the other dogs and solos, and Vic and Blood follow her to the edge of the ruined town, where she goes inside the only remaining building standing, a YMCA. Vic and Blood capture the girl, whom we learn is called Quilla June Holmes. Vic is having feelings towards the girl which he has not experienced before, and holds off on raping her. They converse and her behaviour is odd for a woman in this dangerous situation, leaving Vic unable to perform sexually. Before Vic can rape her, the group are attacked by the gang from the cinema. Vic and Blood fend off the gang, and Quilla June saves Vic's life by killing her over. With Blood injured, the three spend the night in the building, inside an old boiler for protection. Vic has sex with a sleepy Quilla June, who protests verbally and weakly to the act. Quilla June, we find out, is a virgin, and following the sexual act, seems happy and moves her body physically in a way to encourage conception. Quilla and Vic then have consensual sex several times before settling down and discussing things. We learn that Quilla June is from one of the surviving underground communities that Vic refers to as Down Unders. The Down Unders are small underground towns, essentially closed ecospheres, and Quilla June comes from one called Topeka. As Vic gets to know Quilla June while they talk, Blood becomes more and more distrustful of her. The dog's distrust is soon proved correct, with Quilla June knocking Vic out and leaving, conveniently dropping a keycard that allows access to the drop shaft above Topeka. An enraged and vengeful Vic decides to follow Quilla June to Topeka, despite Blood's pleadings and suggestions that there is something not right about her dropping the keycard, telling him it's too easy, as if she wanted you to follow. Blood is unable to climb down the access shaft, and so Vic abandons him above ground in order to pursue Quilla June. The injured Blood agrees to wait for a while at the entrance to the drop shaft. Vic descends underground and enters Topeka, which he likens to a giant can with a town in it. Topeka is a stereotypical Midwest American town loaded with cliché and anachronistic to the core. A slice of pre-war American pie where everything seems stale and fake, including the air. We soon discover that the town is having reproduction problems due to the men's sterility, and that Quilla June Holmes was in fact bait, sent by the Better Business Bureau, a committee of the townspeople which includes her father Lou. Her task? To bring a healthy male solo underground to be used and controlled by the townspeople, the residents want Vic to help them repopulate their stagnant society by impregnating their females. Vic can't believe his luck, but after a while in the Down Under, he can't take it anymore and decides to escape. Quilla June, who has professed her love for Vic, wants to go with him. Having observed her father's incestuous desire for Quilla June, Vic sets a trap for him, using her as bait. The man is dealt with brutally by Vic. Vic retrieves his equipment and they attempt to head to the surface. During this time, Quilla is armed and seems to enjoy violence enormously, even attempting to kill her own mother. They head back to the surface where Vic seeks out Blood, and we come to the conclusion of the story. Blood, having previously been injured, has been waiting all this time for Vic to return, and is close to death. The story ends with Quilla June trying to console Vic and reassure him about the dog's imminent death. Vic knows that they cannot survive without blood, and right now, blood needs food in order to have a chance at surviving. And it all comes down to love. As Quilla bossily says, If you love me, you'll come on. Vic kills Quilla June and feeds her to blood, bandaging the dog with her frilly pink dress. He helps blood recuperate, and as the two of them head off into the wasteland in search of a place they call Over the Hill, Vic ponders her statements on love, 
and the story ends with him wondering about her original question back in the boiler room. Do you know what love is? Sure I know. A boy loves his dog. The story was well received, but the controversy surrounding these characters would come some years later in the form of a movie adaptation by L.Q. Jones. Optioned by L.Q. Jones and Alvy Moore in the early 1970s, Ellison was brought on board to write the script for the film. However, Ellison, not having had any real kind of break in 15 years, went through a period of writer's block, and being unable to finish the script, it fell to Jones to complete the task. Jones would be the screenwriter and first-time director, with Alvy Moore producing. My first introduction to these characters was through the film when I was about 13. I have an extremely dark sense of humour, even at that age, and I thoroughly enjoyed the movie and laughed my head off at the ending. It was engrossing, very funny and very dark. And I understood the dark humour was misogynistic. It remains one of my favourite science fiction films. I wouldn't get around to reading the actual novella until I was 25 and found Ellison's story to be every bit as dark, but much more enjoyable. It does indeed have quite a different tone. Set in the year 2024, the film starred Don Johnson as Vic, Tiger the Dog as Blood and Tim McIntyre as the Voice of Blood, Suzanne Benton as Quilla June and Jason Robards as her father Lou. L.Q. Jones and Alvy Moore both appear in the film as well. The film differs somewhat from the novella, more in tone than in content, though it does remain quite true to Ellison's story. The movie is a very enjoyable black comedy but the controversy that surrounds Vic and Blood stems from the last line, which Jones changed from the story. The last line of the movie is delivered by Blood as he and Vic head off into the wasteland. He jokes, Well, I'd say she certainly had marvellous judgement out of it, if not particularly good taste. <laughs> Joanna Ross, noted feminist science fiction writer and author of The Female Man, said of the film, I proclaim publicly, right here, that sending a woman to see a boy and his dog is like sending a Jew to a movie that glorifies Dakar. You need not be a feminist to loathe this film. Hyperbolic similes aside, the film does have a misogynistic tone and the ending reinforces this. Joanna Ross's article, A Boy and His Dog, The Final Solution, is worth a read and interesting for its views of male and female feminists in the USA at the time. Ross does acknowledge that Ellison's story is indeed different in tone, mainly due to the stupidity and ignorance of Vic as the narrator. Ross also views the lack of narrator in the movie as a contributing factor to its sexist tone. The problem for Ellison was the backlash against this movie was aimed at him, rather than at L.Q. Jones who had written the script. Ellison said that it was the moronic, hateful chauvinist last light which I despise. A soy disant misanthrope, Ellison took umbrage at being accused of misogyny as he fully included women in his misanthropy. Ellison had always stood by his friend, that sexist loon, L.Q. Jones, and was actually a fan of the film apart from the last line. This was simply because his beloved characters had been brought to life on the movie screen in a very faithful way. He also thought that L.Q. Jones's ending was in a way right for the movie and right for its audience. As an independent film, both he and Jones wanted a boy and his dog to succeed. The conversation created out of the feminist backlash towards the film would later see Ellison reflect on these times. The rise of feminism in the USA in the 1960s and 70s was massively important to the changes undergoing in American society and Ellison felt that he had been placed unfairly on the wrong side of that conversation. Aware that times change, Harlan Ellison viewed that he did need to address some of these issues, and this would culminate in the creation of Spike, the female solo that ends up entangled with Vic and Blood. The film is considered a cult classic, and I imagine it still generates much debate today. The movie is available on Amazon Prime and here on YouTube, and is well worth a look though is not suitable for younger viewers. Ellison began writing Egg Sucker in November of 1976, with the short story being published in Ariel, The Book of Fantasy, Volume 2. 
The story here was notably illustrated by Richard Corbin, whom Harlan Ellison viewed as the definitive A Boy and His Dog artist, and would go on to work on Vic and Blood, the chronicles of A Boy and His Dog graphic novels. Egg Sucker serves as a prequel to A Boy and His Dog, and is narrated by Blood this time. The story is quite a humorous tale that shows the mutual dependency of the two on each other, as well as also demonstrating fully that Blood can be as equally impulsive, stupid, and quick to anger as Vic. In March of 1977, L.Q. Jones discussed the idea of creating a boy and his dog into a TV series with Ellison. Egg Sucker was to serve as a pilot, the name of which would be Bloods Are Over, and Ellison wrote the script. The television network involved, NBC, refused to approve L.Q. Jones as the director and tried to split the pair up. Ellison refused, and NBC decided not to pursue the project, with Harlan taking his script with him, now intending to turn it into a prose work. With a deal set up with Ace Books that ultimately wouldn't happen, Ellison began working on expanding his A Boy and His Dog stories, with the idea of creating a single overall novel featuring Vic and Blood. He decided the title of this would now be Bloods Are Over, taken from the title of the NBC pilot. Bloods Are Over in this case is a reference to the A. E. Heisman poem Ravelli. Clay lies still, but bloods are over, breaths aware that will not keep. Up, lad, when the journey's over, there'll be time enough to sleep. At this time, Ellison developed the next stage of the story, and Run Spot Run would be published in the September October 1980 issue of Media Scene Preview and then reprinted in the January 1981 issue of Amazing Stories. Run Spot Run has a very different tone to the other two stories, and is set following the events of A Boy and His Dog. The story is a hallucinogenic nightmare for the two, with Vic's guilt over what happened to Quilla June Holmes being telepathically projected onto blood. The story leaves the two characters in a very bad place, seemingly with Vic dead and blood fleeing into the wasteland on his own. This was seen as a response by Ellison to the controversy regarding the film, and by being asked continually for new stories featuring Vic and Blood by fans. And if you were a fan of the stories of Vic and Blood, you would sadly not hear from them for quite some time. Egg Sucker, A Boy and His Dog and Run Spot Run would be placed together and published in comic book form in 1988 as Vic and Blood the Chronicles of a Boy and His Dog. The collected works would later be republished from 2003 onwards as Vic and Blood, The Continuing Adventures of a Boy and His Dog. And in the 2003 iBooks edition, we finally saw some new Vic and Blood material, which included, this is a conversation that happened on Saturday night. Always intending to merge all the A Boy and His Dog stories into one big novel, Ellison continued to work at the final part of these stories, albeit in screenplay form. The intent was to then turn the final draft into a completed novel, merging all the stories of Vic and Blood into a single work. Ellison would finish the script, but due to ill health, the final prose treatment of Bloods Are Over would never happen. The story, however, was finished now updated to include a female solo called Spike, who is very much the match for Vic and Blood, Ellison was able to hold a copy of Bloods Are Over, the 2018 version, in his hand just a few days before he passed away. Bloods Are Over, The Complete Adventures of a Boy and His Dog, published in 2018, for the first time brought the complete stories of Vic and Blood together. Sadly for me, I missed this coming out at the time, and if you're familiar with this edition, then you have the completed story. And so we come to the reason we're discussing these stories today, the recently released Edgeworks Abbey Archive edition, also edited by Jason Davis, and I'd like to highly recommend it. The difference in this edition to the 2018 one is the ongoing work of Jason Davis to bring the complete story into its correct timeline and update some elements of the narrative. The timeline for the stories now begins with Egg Soccer in 2063, as opposed to 2023, and the presidential list that Blood tries to teach Vic now also includes the name Trump. This edition should mark a final completion of the stories of Vic and Blood, 
unless someone intends to turn Ellison's scripts into prose. But it is unnecessary. Blood Zerover is a great read, filled with notes and insight from Harlan Ellison and Jason Davis, as well as containing some of the collected wit and wisdom of blood. I can highly recommend this book. These stories and their characters, as much as they have been maligned and misunderstood over the years, are still loved and respected. They are science fiction icons, and Ellison's great skill in these stories is Vic, Blood, and later Spike's characterisation. The post-apocalyptic world they inhabit has shades of William Golding's Lord of the Flies, especially with the depiction of the mostly all-male rover packs and solos. Vic and Blood's mutual love and dependency together with their quest for a safe haven known as Over the Hill, is enormously reminiscent of George and Lenny from John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. Vic and Blood's influence on science fiction can be seen in the Mad Max series, as well as the popular Fallout games. If you're new to science fiction, these stories are easy to read, but do contain adult themes and language. If perhaps you're an older reader who's been put off these stories by the controversy generated by the film's ending, then I would suggest that you give these stories a chance. They may, after all, challenge your perceptions of Vic and Blood and Spike, and perhaps like me, you might just fall in love with these characters. It's easy to understand the pain that the controversy attached to the film caused Ellison. Ultimately, these stories were written by him for two reasons. Firstly, Harlan Ellison loved his dog, Abu, and wrote the original tale, in part, for him. Abu is named as an ancestor of blood in the story. Secondly, and most importantly, Harlan Ellison wanted us all to be a lot kinder to each other. And if you understand that, then these stories are actually about love, not misogyny, not rape, not cannibalism, but love. Our goal on the station is to share our love and knowledge of all things science fiction, the stories of Vic and Blood are an absolute joy to read. Bloods are over the complete adventures of a boy and his dog gets our science fiction station recommendation and details for the book are in the description below. I'd give it a 10 out of 10. So from one boy and his dogs, we'll see you next time when you visit the station. Hi everyone, I'm Doc Sloan and I'd like to thank you for watching my science fiction station. We'd love to hear your comments and feedback on our videos. If you enjoy the content, please give it a like, and if you're a bit of a fan of science fiction, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and spread the word. Thanks very much. Bye bye.